It's the Friday Morning Thumb on the Live 88.5 Morning Startup. Yeah, it's uh, movie reviews and a pick for the weekend, the Friday Morning Thumb. And Ottawa filmmaker Christopher Redman in with the startup this morning. Hey, Chris. Good morning, man. Hi. What do you got for a uh, thumb today? Well, uh, I'm going to be putting my thumb out there for Serena. Um, although it's not going to be very high. In fact, it's going to be upside down. Oh, no. Um, oh. So this is the new movie by uh, with Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper. Okay. And it's kind of riding in the theaters on this wave of very low expectations. <laughs> Surprisingly, because um, it's actually their third film together, what feels like in a row, um, yeah. where they play love interests. But um, it was actually shot three years ago. All right, And this has been sitting on the shelf for, for a long time. No one really knew why. We sort of do a little bit now, but, um, you know, g- going in there with these low expectations actually helps the film because it's not an unmitigated disaster, but it's right. it's also just, you know, not that uh, worthy of the talent that's being that's involved. So what it is, is it takes place in, in the 30s and Bradley Cooper plays this sort of timber baron, right, who's got this yeah. empire in the muddy foothills of Northern Carolina and the Smoky Mountains. And, and then he ends up meeting this girl, um, Jennifer Lawrence, who's, you know, riding a horse at one point. And it's this fast and fancy road romance where right. you know they meet each other cut to them having sex cut to he's introducing her as his wife right. and so it moves along quickly but um, the thing is she plays this really tenacious feminist right who wields an axe and and he sees her as an equal partner in his timber business of right. course none of the other men do <laughs> right and and it's always quite interesting wow. in that sense and it becomes more her story but it um, it quickly kind of dissolves into this you know uh, crazy lady <laughs> tale you know she, she ends up taking the crazy train by the end of it unfortunately okay. right. which has been a theme a little bit this year in movies, um, not to give any spoilers away for some other big movies that came out, but it's something that's a little disappointing in a sense where it had built up this really nice character drama, and Jennifer Lawrence really holds her own. Bradley Cooper, on the other hand, something about him just exudes, uh, I'll say contemporary to me. I did okay. not buy him in this period piece. Right. I don't know whether it's just his voice, uh, kind of got that kind of pubescentness. He doesn't seem like he can lead these big burly men in the timber business. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but it just, yeah, it just kind of fell apart completely Where's for me. Where's my Manny Petty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I look at him and it just it doesn't feel like I would have, and maybe it's that nose. That nose didn't exist in the 30s. I'm convinced of it. Okay. And, yeah. and, and the meggings. <laughs> the meggings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Haircut just a little too nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's someone who I think is a, is a good actor, nothing against him, yeah. but I watch this and I go, no, nope, don't buy it. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, what's the other movie you want to talk about? Well, you know, the one that I think I would recommend is, believe it or not, the Corner Gas movie. So this is something <laughs> oh, that no, is really? only in theaters for five days. And listen, if you're one of the 1.5 million people who watch the show on a weekly basis, you won't be disappointed. All right. And, and you know, I'm going to put my bias on the table. I'm from Saskatchewan. Okay. okay? <laughs> so that might lead into There's a little bit of my, of my love for this film. Okay. But I mean, if you're someone who knows the names Davis and Oscar and Brent and Lucy and Wanda, and they bring a smile to your face, like me, then you're really going to enjoy this. And the thing with Corner Gas, if you've only kind of casually seen it, you probably think, oh, it's kind of slow-paced. Yeah. It's a little strange. But it's what it is, it really is, and this is kind of high praise, but it's kind of the Canadian equivalent of Seinfeld in a lot of ways, uh, both in the way it approaches humor. It's it's very carefully constructed comedy mm-hmm. where they set up a joke early on and it pays off. Everything that's being set up in this film early on, there's a payoff right. coming down the line, which is respecting what the TV show did. And yes, it's not that kind of witty, lightning fast pace of comedy that we're used to on movies or in shows like you know Thirty Rock and and right. maybe The Office even. But it is you know really warm comedy and it's really enjoyable. I mean, it's really a service to the fans to the point where the end of the film there is a sing-along where it's literally karaoke <laughs> where you can sing along cool. to the to the intro <laughs> music that's awesome so it's a nice love in for fans it's worth seeing and, and I had a great time awesome that's it must awesome. be different to see it in a theater as opposed to watching this show and these characters at home on the couch by yourself. Yeah, and you know what? They expanded a little bit, too. So there's some really, uh, you know, beautiful shots of the prairies early on. I know it sounds funny, but these big kind yeah. of, you know, sweeping aerial shots. And they do expand the scope. But what they don't do is lose sight of what makes the show right. great. You know, that c- close focus on it. So unlike, say, the Trailer Park Boys movie, I'm also a huge Trailer Park Boys fan. But that movie tried to sort of reset the franchise and say, okay, if you've never seen the Trailer Park Boys before, yeah. this is going to be the introduction. Right. Corner Gap. Forget it. The very first scene is them standing around, quiet, all looking at each other. They're like, geez, how long has it been? And someone says, uh, five years and three days, whatever, two years or two months. And they're like, they're referring to the last time the last episode played, right, you know? Right, so right. they acknowledge right away that like, they're like, oh, nothing's happened since then. And they're just right. kind of standing around, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, it's really a, a nice kind of closure for the film. And I mean, the, the TV series ended on a nice note. This right. ended on an even nicer one. Is there, is there any, um, 
Any benefit to seeing it with other like-minded individuals who also love the show? Do you get, was there a feeling of camaraderie or anything to the experience kind of a thing? Well, there's the sing-along at the end, which I <laughs> right, guess you okay, can all, all right. hold <laughs> each other, embrace, yeah. and yeah. sing. Uh, you know, you can tell me if your dog ran away. And, uh, I mean, it's a fun song. Is there, you know, the reason I think it's only five days in theaters is kind of legitimizing it. Right. But here's a little secret that they're not totally letting everyone know. It's going to be on TV in two weeks, all right, right if you right. do want to wait till then. And then you can get it on DVD just in time for Christmas. So it's a really interesting release strategy where they're kind of yes. putting it all out there at once. But um, if you just can't wait to, to see the good folks at Dog River getting into some shenanigans, uh, okay. get to the theater. All right, Christopher Redman. Uh, the website is Dear Cast and Crew. You'll find a link at live885.com and then click on Startup. It's the Friday morning thumb. And uh, it's 819 now.